joined now by Ryan Gerdusky. And I say this fondly, one of our favorite data nerds out there. Ryan, I think the last time we had you on was a couple of months ago, if I remember correctly. And you yeah, were at that silence. point. Yeah, long silence. You were at that point becoming somewhat increasingly optimistic on Trump's chances to win the race. So let me start with you right now. Since we last talked to you, as we sit here almost exactly six months out, how would you assess this Trump versus Biden race? Are you still optimistic on Trump's side? What has the data shown you in the last two months or so? Well, so I write this in the National Populist Newsletter on Substack, my National Populist Newsletter, if anyone wants to subscribe. Um, there is basically a dichotomy of two conflicting regions of the country, the Sun Belt and the Rust Belt. That's really where almost all of our swing states reside in one of those two regions. The Sun Belt is everything below the 36th parallel. So basically Tennessee, Oklahoma, Arizona, and below. Um, and they include swing states or traditional swing states like Florida, North Carolina, uh, now, Texas, which is pretty much a swing state, and Arizona and Nevada. Uh, the what what we've seen in the Sun Belt is those states. Trump has a very healthy margin outside the margin of error in most polls. Um, Florida and Texas are way beyond the margin of error. They're almost in double digit territory. Um, and even in North Carolina is basically there. Trump is pulling about five points. Even in Nevada, uh, Arizona, and Georgia, Trump's lead in Arizona is about four points. In Georgia, it's 3.7, and in Nevada, it's 3.5. What's more interesting, if you look at it, is where the averages have been for so long. This isn't a new thing. Um, Trump has, has led in Georgia since October. He's led in North Carolina since last August, and he's been that way with Arizona and Nevada since November. So this has been six straight months and seven of lots of news stories, of lots of different headlines, of lots of money by the Biden administration and Democratic Party being put into these states that have had a little impact. My numbers have moved out a point in Biden's favor, but not enough to sit there and move them out of the margin of error. Then there's the Rust Belt. The Rust Belt is um, places mostly three big states, Pennsylvania, Wisconsin and Michigan. Trump has been leading in the Rust Belt in all those areas, uh, but by very, very small numbers, by a point, a point and a half to two and a half points in Michigan. That is not a safe place to be. Now, that is remarkably better than he was in in 2016 and 2020 when state polling was very off in 2016 and somewhat off in 2020. But um, Trump has got much more to has has a lot more work to do in the Midwest that is older and whiter than he does in the Sun Belt, which is younger and uh, more diverse. And uh, that will be the deciding factor in this upcoming election. Hey, Ryan, it's Buck. Um, where do you think the Democrats believe their best shots at taking swing states? We all know what those swing states are. Where do they think they have their best shot, you believe, based on the polling and the data you can see? Well, absolutely. Pennsylvania is uh, very, very, very important. Michigan, especially with Robert F. Kennedy Jr. making the ballot in Michigan um, and Wisconsin, those three places, because they have while they have a huge working class white population, there is a very, very, very small Latino population. And as Latinos are reorienting themselves, much like white voters did in the 1970s and 1980s, where conservatives, conservative whites were no longer voting Democrat, they were voting Republican for president. We're seeing a lot of that among Latinos, where conservative Latinos who traditionally vote Democrat are voting more and more Republican. Um, they don't have, he does not have that boost. It's gonna be completely among college educated whites and working class whites. And the thing that Trump has, Trump has the numbers right now working in his favor, but the people who vote often and vote continuously, especially college educated whites, are very, very heavily in Joe Biden's camp. And that is how Joe Biden could lose the entire um, South, South, uh, Sun Belt, all the swing states in the Sun Belt, and still win the presidency if he manages to hold on to enough working class whites and college educated whites. Pew Research in their exit polls of 2020, 27% of all Biden voters were non-college educated whites. That's a lot. That is the second largest part of his coalition outside of college educated whites. So these are tens of millions of people um, that are that should be Republican, that would be Republican, up for, that possibly up for grabs um, if they try to appeal to them. And that would be the main priority, I think, of the Trump campaign. 
All right, this is a super nerd question, but correct me if I'm wrong on the math here. We are potentially, if Biden were to hold on to the Midwest, let's say he won Mm. Wisconsin, let's say he won Michigan, and he won Pennsylvania. Based on what you're saying, Rust Belt versus Sun Belt, if Trump flipped Georgia, if he flipped Nevada, and if he flipped Arizona, it would come down potentially to a 269 to 269 tie uh, if he wins the Sun Belt, loses the Rust Belt, depending on what would happen in the Omaha, Nebraska congressional seat, uh, the way that they correct. divide up things. In the, in the, is that correct? Yes, that's correct. Yeah. Because depending they, on what happens in Trump Nebraska, would win, Trump would win if this got tossed into the House of Representatives tied up at 269. And by the way, that's not a crazy result based on polling right now, right? If they, if the, or, but the thing is that Republicans have to hold the House because what happens is, is not the old Congress votes for it, the new Congress does. So uh, if Republicans lose but the it's House, by state. Sorry to sorry to nerd out even more, but it's by state delegation, right? Not necessarily yeah. control of the House, and I believe Republicans would be favored to still have more states. But I mean, this is this is how tight it's it not, could be. Yes, it's it is a yes that is one hundred percent a potential, depending how swing states in places like Michigan, Arizona, um, Pennsylvania go where the majority of members could be Democrat or Republican from either which state. It is potential. It is possible. Um, But yeah, that would mean like places like North Carolina and Georgia would definitely be voting Republican. But there are a number of swing states which would draw the majority of the delegation um, being Democrat or Republican in in critical battlegrounds in Arizona, Pennsylvania, Michigan. Um, So we'd have to wait and see. Minnesota. We're speaking to Ryan Gerdusky, National Populist. Newsletter is his Substack. stack. Uh, go subscribe to it. Ryan, how's the money game looking right now? As I understand it, the RNC has started out in a rough spot this year in terms of cash on hand, but has been really uh, ramping up fundraising, successfully ramping it up recently. Um, what can you tell us about about how that component of it is lining up right now as we get closer. Yeah, to I mean, Laura, elect- Laura Trump has really done a number of, of good work when it comes to She's definitely not spending money like Ronna McDaniel was, which is a good thing. And she's been increasing in her fundraising efforts. And the main job of the RNC is to fundraise. Same job with the DNC. One of the big problems for Hillary Clinton in 2016 was the DNC was functionally bankrupt when she took it all, when she, when she became the party's nominee. Obama really didn't fundraise very well for it whatsoever. Um, and the, but the problem that the RNC is having right now, and the Republicans are having right now, is that they are, the state parties, which were once very strong in a number of states, are extremely weak. The Michigan State Party, the Arizona State Party, they are in terrible shape, a number of them. Um, and the reliance on state parties to sit there and move the needle, which was intra, it, was, it was so important in 2016, is not available today. I'll say how important it was in 20, 2016 in Ohio, the state party was so well run. Um, Baduchik, I think, ran at that point. But uh, it was so well run that on election day of 2016 and their early get out the vote plan, by noon, they had stopped using any resources in Ohio and shifted everything to Michigan. And Michigan obviously was was won by, I think, less than half a point. But by the Ohio GOP saying, we have this election in the bag, we won it, let's move all of our resources to Michigan, was so important to helping flip that state and mobilize low propensity voters and getting them out to vote. Uh, Ohio still is a very good uh, state party. Other states, though, do not. And, and those resources are very, very badly needed when it comes to helping elect people and helping elect a president. So... Donald Trump, the one thing that the RNC and the and, and the Trump campaign have not done is they do not have a, uh, a lot of state offices or local offices as of yet. And Biden has a number. That doesn't mean a lot necessarily because Trump had very few in 16 and Biden had almost none in 20. But it, it, in tight races, that get out the vote effort does mean a lot. Uh, Ryan, in 16, we saw Pennsylvania, Wisconsin and Michigan all go for Trump. In 20, we mm-hmm. saw them all go for Biden. Um, right. Do you believe that it's likely that all three of those states go the same direction in 24, either for Biden or for Trump? Part one. Part two, if you were analyzing this from Trump's perspective, 
Do you believe that Michigan, maybe based on the Israel and uh, and Palestine situation, has moved more than Pennsylvania or Wisconsin? If Trump were going to win one of those three, which one or maybe rank them in likelihood of winning? Do you think it's different than in 16 and 20? Well, one of the big problems in 20 for Republicans was the Green Party was not qualified on the ballot in either Wisconsin, Arizona, or Georgia. They'd all been thrown off the ballot and had the Green Party performed equally as well in any of those states as they did in the neighboring state, the election would have been different. Now, the Green Party, as I understand it, is on the ballot in all of those states. So a really hardcore progressive, which is Jill Stein, who's campaigning on a pro-Palestinian message and a pro-Gaza statehood message, is uh, on the ballot in all those places. So that may make up a big thing. RFK Jr., I believe, is on the ballot in uh, Georgia and Michigan. I'm not so sure about Arizona as of yet. That will make up a certain difference. The reason that those states really swung in 2016 was there was a proportion of the population, specifically white, college educated and and non-college educated, who genuinely hated Hillary Clinton and couldn't and and, and a portion of the black population, by the way, who hated Hillary Clinton, either wouldn't turn out for her or when they did, they voted for Gary Johnson or Jill Stein in 2016. That hatred did not happen in 2020. They didn't feel the same thing for Joe Biden. So although Trump improved his performance among non-college educated whites by a point from 64 to 65% nationwide, the percentage of the five or 6% that had sat out or had voted for third party came to Joe Biden. And that's where the margin made the difference. The margin was smaller because a lot of people who sat out third party had come home to the Democratic Party. Now, that six, seven percent still exists today. They may sit out again. They may sit there and vote for Joe Biden or they may vote third party. Trump should make a real appeal to those voters because non-college educated voters, one, they have uh, the economy is hurting them the most. Two, they are the most fragile from mass immigration as far as their jobs go. Conversations over AI replacing their jobs is paramount that no one's really talking about yet. And I'll put up one other last thing. There is a huge population in this country that are um, that live in mobile home communities that are being increasingly purchased by large companies that are displacing millions upon millions of people or threatening to displace millions upon millions of people. That's a real conversation. And mobile home societies, communities rather, are very large in swing states in this country. Their biggest, I think, are Florida, North Carolina, Nevada, Arizona. Um, I think those are the top four. So that's a very, very important demographic. Speaking to working class white voters right now is critical. In the same way that he attempted to to black voters in 2020, talking about the platinum plan, there should be a plan for the white working class Americans who feel completely unrecognized. And I think speaking to them is critical at this moment um, when six or seven percent of their vote could easily swing one way or the other. Ryan Gerdusky, everybody, check out National Populist newsletter on Substack. Ryan, keep your phone handy. We're going to need to talk to you as this gets closer. <laughs> All right, right, great. Thank you. Think you. Trump is still winning. Two months ago, you said yes. Just yes or no. Would he win if the election were today based on your analysis? Yes. Yes, absolutely yes. As of today, yes. Awesome. That's good to hear. We'll talk to you again soon. Hopefully the result will stay the same. My Pillow $25 <laughs> extravaganza sale gives you a chance to buy some of the most popular products at record low prices. Giza Dream Sheets, the towel sets, sandals, slippers, many other items, all 25 bucks. They're able to give this great price point because they've eliminated the middleman retailer, passing the savings directly on to you. Here's how you get hooked up. Go to MyPillow.com, use our names, Clay and Buck, as the promo code. And if you've got pampered pets like Buck does, they've got dog beds and blankets in the extravaganza sale, too. Just go to MyPillow.com, click on the Radio Listener Special Square, $25 deals, free shipping on orders over 75 bucks. Use promo code Clay and Buck for this sale today. 